so this is an interview with is this the one I've got? Let me pause it here. So this is this is an interview with um it's off camera with Sam Jones. I'm not sure who Sam Jones is, I'm not sure if this is a real popular thing that everyone's familiar with, but essentially it's the modern version of Inside the Actor Studio, right? Where he interviews um actors and actresses and kind of talks through their career, their pitfalls and and all that sort of malarkey. And it's a good interview because uh, usually for the most part actors are quite guarded in terms of what they speak what they speak about. They don't really give long form interviews for the most part. They seem to keep them to themselves. And if they do, they try to give them to people who are respective in the industry who can kind of dig in a bit deeper and get away from all the gossip and rumors that tabloids are interested in and just get to the whole kind of craft of acting, the philosophy the philosoph- philosophy that goes into some of their life decisions. Um, how they pick roles really the minutiae of things that i think actors and actresses around the world will kind of geek out on right and i think this sam jones guy does a really good job of of interviewing um some of these guests and really get into the heart of the issue and really kind of you know um drilling down onto it and um i saw i I quickly checked on on um on uh netflix and it appears to be like it was i think it was on netflix for the first three seasons and now i think he has his own standalone side that you can kind of subscribe to I think you pay a monthly fee and you can, you know, watch videos of, you know, actors actually going through the interview process. But I thought this interview here was very telling. It was with a, a, Sarah, a lady called Sarah Goldberg um, from HBO's Barry. And she kind of talks about how she detailed, um, talking about her fame, right? Her, the, her kind of, you know, battle with fame overall. And I thought it was a, quite a cool bit here. I think I'm going to try and get to it. Where she speaks about this idea of not trying to be famous, right? She tried to go into acting to be an actor and not to be famous. And that... Um, she only got into acting because uh what did she say yeah i think she said she only got into acting because she wanted to get no she she only got into act no she she only had to go into acting because she was on broadway and she felt like she wasn't getting any roles now because all the actors were coming into broadway so now she's kind of got into you know be, being more visible and you know being in a hit tv show which is hbs barry that's been getting loads of rave reviews but i haven't got around to watching it She's kind of doing that in order to get famous enough so she should just go back into a uh, kind of relative an- anonymity and kind of revert back to type there, which is kind of a weird way to go about uh, having a successful career, but really interesting in terms of the current climate we're living in now. I'm just trying to find a clip here. Hopefully it kind of loads here. Let me see if I can find it. That's going to be your answer. I, I, I am a curious person and I'm searching, but I was pretty sure that the answer didn't li- lie in that. And, fame and fortune. Yeah, I know. And... and uh, and I saw a lot of my friends become really famous really quickly and that being really difficult and and not being able to get their anonymity back or their freedom. But equally, I was playing these great parts in, in the West End and on Broadway. And, right. and then you realize, oh, now movie stars are doing all these parts. And, and, and I was nervous that if I don't do something that has some kind of visibility these parts are going to stop happening as well right that weird paradox yeah how weird is that right how strange is that that you're an act you're an actress on actor right and you're worried about whether or not you're going to be getting other parts or you're worried about keeping your position where you are because now suddenly um the actors from famous you know hit shows or movies for maybe mismanagement of their career maybe because they're not as influential or well known or as in a spotlight as they once were previously are now kind of infiltrating and coming into your zone it must be such a weird mind fuck really it must be super super strange but then again like i said i think it goes to i think it goes to the current climate i think i mentioned it to somebody i think i might mention it to a friend i think i said over the years i think um you know with the whole um i think i mentioned kim kardashian in this i said I think the the reason why Kim Kardashian has become more like um socially accepted, I think, has less to do with the you know releasing a prison, releasing uh, people in prison and stuff, right? From um, non uh, non violent offences, which is obviously something really admirable. Her going to law school is really admirable. Her kind of you know deciding to you know have a massive family is really admirable. Something about because again she could be in quite selfish and be make it all about her. People might still say she's selfish, but the fact that she's you know taking a step back and kind of gone into motherhood is really admirable too for her career because I'm sure other people in a position probably wouldn't want to have done that. Um, there's things that she's done that are admirable. But I think but I think a lot of it has to do with I think over the years um, we've seen the Kardashians as a family maintain their level of visibility throughout all the cycles of fame right consistently maintain it we haven't seen a big change in their kardashian show i've watched clips and it's you know fairly basic um which kind of speaks to the real success of it right it's something i've never watched i'll never kind of get into and watch because it's not for me but 
there is something very organic about how they are, right? You watch the show and it's, it's incredibly boring. It's incredibly inane. They're just here, you know, whining and, you know, uh, not whining, but they're just, you know, going on and on about, you know, their life. They're just, you know, it's pretty basic, right? It's about them talking about dinners and people missing stuff and infighting. It's just, you know, whatever. They're, they're, they're not dressing it up. There's no glitz and glamour. So it's not like love and hip hop. They're consistently themselves. They're consistently visible. They're always posting stuff. Everything seems like a calculated marketing execution. Whether they go on the family holiday, whether they go on the dinner, whether it was the Jordan Woods situation, everything is visible, 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 visible. And I think what's happened over the years is that we've, as a public, we've kind of still sat back and said, you know what? I find it really difficult as a human, right? We all sat back and find it. You know, I find it really difficult as an individual to update my Instagram without feeling yucky, right? Without cringing, without feeling embarrassed at myself that I'm taking another picture of this avocado and toast. I'm taking another picture of me eating a burger. I'm taking a picture of me having shots with my friends on the weekend. You feel quite, you, you feel a little bit disgusted, right? You feel a little bit dirty that you're doing it, but you do it because, you know, you want to maintain your social media presence. You want to be active on there. You want to document it so to create. You want to do all those cute, cute things. You want to maybe become an influencer. You do what you need to do in order to kind of, you know, maintain your visibility. But you feel a bit dirty. But then you think to yourself, wow, if I feel dirty on my little micro level, right? My little micro influencer level, 500 followers, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5, 10, whatever it may be. Imagine what the collections must feel like. Or more, uh, more so, that is, you start to understand and realize that what they're doing is natural talent. The idea of wanting to become famous, the idea of doing the things necessary to keep that fame, the idea of chasing that fame, the idea of maintaining that fame wherever it may be is incredibly difficult and it takes a lot out of a human most humans can't be that um self-involved right it it, it 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 takes a level of detachment a level of understanding of who you are um it takes real talent to do that and i think we're starting to realize that that actually you know what this fame thing is talent because we know we have friends in our friendship circle i know i have friends in my friendship circle who don't miss any influencer event right i think i mentioned it before there's um what is it? It's a it's that Heron Preston T-shirt, the influencer slipstream, right? Or the influencer world tour. There are certain events that you have to go to, right? If you're an influencer, you want to be seen at certain things, right? Whether it's London Fashion Week, Paris Men's Fashion Week, um, Coachella, uh, the, uh, Art Basel, Miami, um, what's your other thing? Uh, MoMA or New York Art Book Fair, the New York or MoMA, wherever that other one is. There's a few others, right? Things that you have to go to, and they consistently go. They don't have anything on. No one's flying them out. They just save their money and they go to these things just to be visible. And you know how much work that takes. Then they get there. You have to document their whole time. They have to live stream. They have to post pictures on Instagram. They have to take film pictures. They have to take someone to take pictures of their outfit. It's just consistent, 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 consistent visibility, which really takes a lot out of you, right? It makes you nervous, makes you self-conscious. You have to always think about your outfits. It's tiring work to do. So I think we've realized that it's talent. I think with this actress, what we're realizing, what she's saying is that, yeah, you get into you get into acting, you get into a certain profession, and you start to realize that you know the beauty of social media, the beauty of all these you know these industries for the most part is that there's various lanes that you can go into that can make you money, right? And I think now we've kind of reframed success, and we kind of understand success isn't just being visible. Success is doing what you love every single day, right? That's what success is, right? It's not about whether or not you're the most famous person; it's about doing what you love. So even if you're playing in the second division of the Premier League. But you get paid weekly to play the game that you love. You play for a club that you that appreciates you. Your family are, are well off. Your kids are are in a good school and they're not wanting for anything. That is success. You might not be Ronaldo. You might not be even Messi. But you're not. You're comparing yourself to the top one percent of the population. But then over time, we start. We realize, you know, with people having businesses just selling jam on Instagram and shit, that that is what success is. Not just it's not just about building the next social media platform. It's about doing what you love consistently day in day out. And I think actors and actresses have been the last to realize this, right? They've been the last of the of the of the kind of entertainment people to realize that that's a thing. I think musicians are kind of going through that stalemate now at the moment, where you don't need to be the most visible person to not to a good career, right? It's that one thousand true fans rule, right? You have one try. You have one thousand true fans that pay for your music that come and see you play wherever you wherever you come and play whether it's in their town or on tour they buy your merch that's enough you don't need to be drake right you don't need that because that, again that takes a certain amount of a certain amount of talent certain amount of luck certain amount of ability certain amount of exposure whatever it may be you need to there's things that you need to do there's things that only he can do like visibility wise and not a lot of people would want to do right and that's a, a real thing and i think this actress is this actor sorry um Sarah Goldberg realized this really early on, and I think that's a really, really key part to the whole interview that I thought was very interesting. But let's continue to a little bit more of it. Yeah. Of having 
to become famous to be anonymous. I know, I know, I know. Like having to become famous like, to like do to get all a fraud, name right? So that you can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To go back to working for six hundred bucks a week, yeah. And you know, it's I don't know. I I'm it's it's an interesting ride. This and with Barry. And you know what? As well, I'm thinking about this too. You know what this might explain? Do you remember the whole thing with Constance Wu from um, Crazy Rich Asians, right? Constance Wu um, got into a bit of a social media scuffle because people were really pissed off that um, I think it got announced that Fresh Off The Boat was renewed for another season and she's one, I think she plays the mother in Fresh Off The Boat which is based on Eddie Hong's uh, memoir, loosely based on his memoir. Eddie Wong, sorry. And um, she got annoyed on social media like, oh, she got pissed off. Oh my God, oh, this is the most terrible news ever. But it got, it got renewed. And people were really annoyed by it. Like, what the fuck? You should be grateful you have a job. This is disgusting. How could you be so ungrateful? Blah, blah, blah. But they could, again, she might have been bratty about it. She might have gone about it the wrong way. And her apology was god-awful. She, she she started up blaming everyone else but herself. And then went on at the end of it to say, believe all women or something, which is really bizarre. But anyway, I think taking away whatever she done wrong, looking at it as, as a whole, it might explain that what she was actually complaining about was the idea that her life would never be hers anymore, right? Because she's going to be filming movies, which is going to take a lot of time out of your schedule. And then she'll be filming a TV series, right? Which again, will take a lot of time out of your schedule too. So really, in effect, she probably would hope she most actresses and actresses, even though, you know, TV roles pay a lot con con consecutively, con concurrently, right? You get paid per episode. It still takes a lot out of you. And it, and it means that you remain visible to the populace for, for a longer time period, right? Especially if it ends up getting syndicated. So there's, there's no end and you can't go back to your normal life anymore, which you probably couldn't because the Crazy Rich Ages was a massive hit, in, especially in the Asian market and in the world overall. Um, that might explain why she had that really weird reaction to stuff. And um, this idea that you don't want to be, it's a really strange lever of famous, right? You don't want to be that famous. Because I'm sure there's actors and actresses out there who kind of really appreciate what someone like The Rock does. He might not be the best actor, but they know that that requires a certain person to do that sort of thing, to film those big blocks, blockbuster movies, to maintain his physical appearance, to fly to all these premieres all over the world, to talk at all these press junkets, to go on all these um, talk shows or panel discussion shows and try and make it fresh. And, you know, this constant smiling in the camera, because I've heard rumors that he's, he's supposed to be not the nicest person in real life, The Rock, but it makes sense, right? Because he's having to turn it on and be this happy-go-lucky, big, friendly giant all the time that when he's in his real day-to-day -day life, he, there's no need to kind of keep up that pretense, right? He just needs to you just go back and revert back to how he actually is. Um, but again, very interesting interview. I recommend you check it out. Um, an interview with Sarah Gold, but I won't play the rest of it because they probably end up getting pulled off YouTube and it's probably end up already get pulled. But I'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out. Um, really cool, really, really, really cool interview. And uh, again, it might explain why Contest We was really annoyed that Crazy Rich Agents got renewed for another season. Um, I think things are, things are not always as they seem. It's always good to kind of dig a bit deeper and kind of figure out why would this woman have this kind of reaction to a show getting renewed? It makes doesn't make any sense. You've got a job, innit? That's awesome, really. But it's like, mm, really? Is it awesome, though? It's all like when they... Um, it's kind of like when they tell you at work, oh, if you work um, if you work an extra day, if you work during a bank holiday, you get double pay, right? It sounds good on paper, but sometimes your free time is worth more than money, right? That kind of break from work, the idea that you're going to get free day weekend, a time to re recuperate, maybe go away, out, maybe go out of your town with your partner or with some friends and, you know, just chill out a bit, recharge and come back into work refreshed. That's probably more beneficial to you and the company than actually taking the, t the time and a half pay. Which on paper sounds like good, but you know, after tax and all that sort of lucky, you won't even recognize you got any extra money in the end of it anyway. So it's probably not worth it going on and on and on. I think so anyway. That's just my opinion from the outside in, but what do I know?